Hey guys, it's Starlet Flippin' Hippo. Thank you for joining us on our YouTube channel. Today on Hungry Hippo, I'm going to show you how to make homemade taco soup in the crock pot. I'm going to show you how I make it, but remember, like I always say, no recipe is set in stone. Feel free to change anything to suit yourself and your family. Um, I'm going to show you what I use and how I make it, and you can always change it up. In actuality, this recipe that I'm about to show you is a combination of two different recipes I had found online, and I took the ingredients and the parts I liked from both and created my own soup. So you can do the same and experiment. Um, you're going to need your taco seasoning, your homemade taco seasoning that I showed you guys how to make. If you didn't catch that video or you need a reminder, I'm gonna link it down below in the box for you, but you will need the homemade taco seasoning. Of course, if you have to use the stuff out of the pouch, you can. You're going to need some minced onion and some garlic. Again, minced onion can be replaced with onion powder. One teaspoon of onion powder is one tablespoon of minced onion. You could also use fresh onion. You could chop up about a medium-sized white onion would be the appropriate substitute there. Um, Keith doesn't really like onions, which is weird. I cook everything with these, and he's okay with the flavor. I just can't put real onions in. You're going to need a pound of ground beef. I have already browned mine in the skillet before starting filming. I just browned it in the skillet with some onion, garlic, salt and pepper, and then I drained the grease off. Alternately, you can use uh, ground turkey, tofu, omit the beef if you just want a vegetable soup, and then you would use more beans, obviously. I have a, I have corn falling out the bag. Look at that. Um, I have a bag of frozen corn. This is super sweet white corn. You can use yellow corn. This was actually just the only corn the store had. They were all out of the yellow. So you can use um, yellow or white. I have a can of black beans here. You can use uh, these or chili beans or pinto beans. You can put more beans in if you guys are fans of beans. If you're a vegetarian or a vegan, you can add more beans. Sometimes I do put in like a can of these and a can of pinto. I have a can of stewed tomatoes here and one of green chilies mixed in with the um, diced tomatoes. These are like completely optional. You can use two cans of stewed, two cans of diced. You can put in plain tomatoes and add a can of green chilies or you can pick any kind of tomato flavoring. They have all those cans with all the stuff in them. You just really need two cans of tomatoes total because you're going to need those juices for your broth. You're going to need a can of tomato sauce. One of these small cans is fine. And then you're going to need this cheddar cheese soup. Um, you'll notice this is probably the only brand name you're ever going to see on my channel because we're all about budget cooking. I have never seen the cheddar cheese soup in the store brand. I have looked at Walmart and Shop and Save. Um, I just never have seen it. So I do pay up. I pay like $2 for this. But this is really like the basis of the soup. So you got to have it. And the amount of food that this makes, I kind of justify the extra money for the cheddar cheese soup. So once your meat is brown, you want to dump it in. And this is literally a dump and go recipe. So it is a homemade soup, but you're just gonna dump all your ingredients in the crock pot and that's it. I do it the night before we eat it. I put the glass lid on the crock pot into the fridge overnight so that all the different flavors and seasonings can all mix in overnight and kind of like marinate. And then in the morning, I'll put the crock pot on low and I let it cook for six to eight hours. So you're gonna take your taco seasoning and I do two tablespoons per pound of meat as a general rule. Plus this is gonna be a big old pot of soup. So I like a lot in there. Um, the recipe itself calls for a teaspoon of garlic. I'm gonna eyeball. My grandma always taught me to eyeball. Just eyeball it, what she said. And I'm going to use a tablespoon of the onion because that's equivalent to about a medium-sized um, chopped onion. And then we'll put all the tomato stuff in next. You're literally just going to just keep just dumping everything in. You will stir it, um, but you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry about what order you dump it in or layering it or anything like that. You're going to put the juices and all in the beans because we want a broth. And you're going to put your corn in. 
And then I'm going to add this in last. I didn't drop it. No one saw that. You can't prove anything. I usually, this is a really thick, it's almost just like nacho cheese, I guess. So I always use something to dig it out. A little spatula is fine. I get as much as I can because we are going to add some water. So, all right. So once I get everything in, I kind of give it a little bit of a stir just to kind of get things moving. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get some hot water into this can to kind of get the rest of the cheese out. And we're going to, um, you want this to be a soup, so it's got to have a broth. So you need to add your broth. So you can add beef broth if you're not vegan or vegetarian. Beef broth is fine. Or you can use vegetable broth if you're vegan or vegetarian. We use beef broth. Um, you can buy pre-made broth in the carton, which is kind of expensive. I actually usually make my own broth out of beef bouillon with hot water and the beef bouillon. And they have it in the jars where it's like powder, or they have the cubes that you can, they're like wrapped individually in paper. You can fill the paper off the cubes. They have the powder in the jar, and then they have like a paste in the jar. They're all like interchangeable. You just have to read the directions on your jar as to how much bouillon you're mixing with your hot water to make your broth. I always start out with about two to three, I kind of eyeball, I mean I've made this soup enough that I kind of know, um, two to three cups of broth and we'll dump it in here and we'll see where we end up. I like it soupy, I like a lot of broth, so I usually try to aim to get up to here. Can you see that? I usually try to get my water line or my broth line all the way up to the top of the pot. And with the magic of editing, there's now broth in my crock pot. So what I did was I took hot water and I poured it into the cheddar cheese can to just try to get the rest of it, um, the soup out. And that's about 10 and a half ounces, just the can full of water. And then I did two cups of hot water. You can see I had a third here ready just in case but it only took two cups of hot water and this to fill it up. And then um, the directions on my beef bouillon say to add boiling water to X amount of the beef bouillon powder and then add it to your recipe because I let this sit overnight and then I let it cook for six to eight hours on slow heat and it is a crock pot. I always, every time I make soup in the crock pot, I just toss my water in until I get to the level I want and then I add in the bouillon and kind of stir it up with everything else and just let it simmer all day. It will work its way through and create the broth. So this particular brand I have been buying a lot lately. I really like it. It's called Swiss. I think I found it at Walmart. I get the chicken one as well. It's a giant jar and it's like three bucks, maybe four bucks. And in the fall and the winter, I actually make a different kind of homemade soup every single week in the crock pot and it lasts it's just great there's a lot in here so I'm gonna add one and a half teaspoons per cup of water I added I added two cups so three teaspoons and you all should be able to do math as well because we're resellers and we do our own accounting right one two three I say that in jest because I'm actually really bad at math. So if, if you do it my way, like you can add the boiling water and mix it up. If you do it my way, it is going to kind of sit on top like this. And probably four or so hours in the cooking process tomorrow, it will start to disappear and work its way through. It's fine. So after you um, cook this for six to eight hours on low heat, you can serve it over rice. I would not recommend adding the rice to the crock pot, two reasons. Rice never cooks right in the crock pot, and two, rice doesn't freeze right. Uh, so 
I make the rice on the side. We have a rice cooker, and then we individually add however much rice we want to our bowls and then serve our soup over it. And then when I freeze it, it's just this stuff. There's no rice in the freezer. Um, so you can serve it over rice. You can add shredded cheese to the top, sour cream, avocados, black olives. Um, you can crunch tortilla chips or corn chips into it for a nice crunch. It is taco soup, so we do add a cheese and crunchy chips to it. To see. So yeah, you can uh, doctor it up however you guys like with whatever toppings you like. Uh, we do really like the crunched tortilla chips in it. It makes it more like a taco soup. Okay, so this is ready. It's going to go in our fridge and sit overnight. It'll cook all day tomorrow. And whatever we don't eat, we will set aside enough for one more meal to go in the fridge that we'll eat like two or three days later. And I will freeze the rest. It can freeze for up to three months. And you can take it out all winter long and have taco soup every week if you'd like. So let me know in the comments below what you think. Let me know if you're gonna try it, what you're gonna do, how you're gonna make it different, or if you already have a taco soup recipe that you use, and um, how you guys garnish it and stuff. I'm always interested in recipes for homemade soups in the crock pot because we do eat it all fall and winter. It makes so much food, you can freeze it. It's a great warm meal in the cold winter months. And I especially like Mexican food or Mexican themed soups. These are just, they're just delicious. So do me a favor, if you guys like the video, smash that like button for me, I really appreciate it. If you haven't already and you'd like to, please subscribe to our channel and help us feed a hungry hippo. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We are at Flippin' Hippos. Have a good night.